Welcome to the show. It's good to see you here another week. Good to be with you for another week. And I want to start off this week's show. Before we get to our second segment, we'll have my guest, Mike DePlaga from Generations Restaurant and Pub here in Wheeling, by talking about something that I see far too often in recent times. And that's this week I was traveling from Pittsburgh back to Wheeling and uh, hadn't eaten. It was about two in the afternoon, was hungry. So I pulled off of an exit, saw a McDonald's, pulled in to get a, to get a burger. And I was pulling out of that uh, drive through and going back onto the, to the road. And as I made the right hand turn out there, there was a car that was coming, but far enough down the road that I was easily able to, to come onto the roadway. And instead of you know, slowing down when they saw me pulling out, sped up actually, and then started honking their horn at me as if I was pulling out in front of them. Uh, perhaps maybe I should have waited, but I had plenty of time to get out. Um, but nonetheless, I just looked at the person, smiled and, and waved and said, sorry, you know, apologizing to them if I caused them any problem. Instead, when I got to the light and the person pulled up next to me, they looked at me, continued glaring at me and, you know, gave me the middle finger with both hands uh, repeatedly and then honked their horn again and sped off. I've seen that time and time again, not necessarily that thing, but just watching other people around the roads honking their horn in a, in a negative way toward other people, uh, you know, giving people the finger, uh, yelling and screaming things, and it's really disturbing. And, you know, the one thing to remember, not just when driving, but in general, is that people are going to make mistakes. Sometimes people are going to do things that may upset you. Take a deep breath, take a moment, collect yourself, and understand that, hey, no one was trying to do harm to you. No one was trying to put you out. No one was trying to do something that would cause you a problem and be forgiving. You know, if somebody looks at you and says, sorry, you know, wave and say, hey, that's all right. But I've seen it just far too often. I saw it that day and I was already having a little bit of a difficult day to begin with. Uh, it, was, it was not the, the smoothest day in the world. And, uh, you know, I just let it go and just kind of chalked it up to maybe they were having a worse day than I was. Maybe they were going through something themselves and just let it go. But I hope everybody can maybe learn a lesson from that and say, hey, when we're out there on the roadways, we're just out there in life. Uh, we're going to treat others with kindness, be courteous, uh, treat others as you would want to be treated. Leads me to the quote of the week, and this comes from ancient times, actually from uh, a little over 100 BC. Cicero, the famous Roman philosopher, lawyer, politician, said, the safety of the people shall be the highest law. The, shape, the safety of the people shall be the highest law. And I chose that this week because really when you, when you look at things, all of our laws really are about safety for the most part when it comes down to it. Um, laws for how fast we can drive, laws for whether or not we need to keep, upkeep our property, laws for how we conduct our business. All of those things are so we can have a safe society, an orderly society, so people will know what the rules are. And that's because we don't want people to get injured. If there aren't laws, if there aren't rules, then what will happen is if someone is wronged by another, they'll take matters into their own hands instead of resorting to their, the law and the remedies that the law may provide. So the safety of the people should be the highest law. Going all the way back to over 100 BC is something that's been around for a long time. And I think it's, it's something that's important and something we should remember. It's one of the reasons we have our legal system. And as we move forward here, uh, you know, next week we'll have the inauguration of a new president. I think it's also important for everybody to remember that the orderly transition of things, law in our society, our constitution, all of the things that we have are in place for a reason and we need to uphold them and we need to be mindful of them. And we are going to have a new president and we need to support that president, regardless of who you may have voted for, regardless of what you may think of the president-elect, his personality or his principles or what he may do and how he may govern. The fact of the matter is, is that he's our American president. Let's all be Americans. Let's all support not only the president, but let's support the safety of the people and the laws that we have that exist. That takes me to our legal tip this week and kind of sticking with a little bit of a theme. And the legal tip is be sure to practice defensive driving, especially here in the wintertime. Oftentimes, you know, others can be distracted when driving. Uh, you see people that are texting while driving shouldn't do that. People that are doing other things while driving shouldn't do that. But sometimes people also just, you know, there's a blind spot. They don't see you. Whatever it may be, be on the lookout as you're driving, you know, even going back to when you have driver's education class or when you're taking the, the test in order to get your permit. You know, they talk about defensive driving and sometimes we forget that as we've been driving for a number of years. Uh, we kind of just are going through the motions when we drive. We think, well, as long as I'm driving the speed limit, I'm okay. As long as I'm obeying the stop signs, 
the stop lights, the other signals, I'm okay. Well, you need to watch out for what other people are doing too. There are less experienced drivers out there on the road. There are people that are maybe going through uh, situations in their life where they're distracted. They may be doing things that are causing them to be distracted. So be on the lookout, look around you because you know, you want to avoid every accident you can. You want to avoid harm to yourself and those in your vehicle. And, and one of the best ways that you can do that is by seeing what others on the roadway are doing, identifying potential hazards, identifying people that could potentially cause harm to you and avoiding those situations. So uh, practice defensive driving while you're out there this winter. We're going to need to take a break. When I come back, I'm going to be speaking with Mike DePlaga, the owner of Generations Restaurant and Pub here in Wheeling about his family's long history of owning the spot there in Fulton and some other things that they're doing, expansions and uh, elsewhere. Stay with us. Every day, more than 70,000 puppies and kittens are born in the United States. Just one female can contribute more than two million offspring in eight years. At the Tiffany DeLess Spay and Neuter Clinic, we are trying to help. We offer reduced cost services to income qualified families from all over the Ohio Valley. We understand that the cost of owning a pet can be overwhelming, and that stress multiplies when they do. Call the Tiffany DeLesque Spay and Neuter Clinic or visit us online to find out if we can help you. People always ask me what it means to be a dealer for the people. For the people is a simple idea. It means we believe that everybody deserves to drive a nicer, newer car. This belief drives the entire team at Robinson Auto Group to care more, to try harder, and to work smarter. Whatever's keeping you from driving that car you want, I guarantee we'll try our best to help you. We're Robinson Auto Group, and we're the dealer for the people. Welcome back to the show. My favorite part of each show each week is when I have a guest with me. And this week, my guest is Mike DePlaga, the owner of Generations Restaurant and Pub here in Wheeling. Mike, thanks for being on the show this week. Good to be here, Gene. Your family has a long history of owning that spot in the Fulton section of Wheeling. I mean, it's been a number of things over the years, but your family has had it for how long now? I mean, Well, uh, ironically, just over 100 years, there's been a the plug in business at that location of National Road. Now, you, when you go into the, the restaurant, you can see the photos of some of the, you know, your, your dad, your grandfather, the generations that have gone by, that making the name very appropriate, right. but uh, pictures even as a grocery store back in the day. Yeah, there's a large photo of my great-grandfather at the old IGA food liner, which was uh, located where, uh, where the banquet hall was now, used to be an IGA. And, uh, you know, over the years, you know, just even looking at the photos on the wall, you know, seeing the circus come by with the elephants marching across National Road there yeah. in Fulton and some of the things, you know, you as a, a youngster perhaps at, at, back when it was a bar uh, per se. And, uh, but, but it's kind of transitioned, you know, in the last decade or so from being more of just a bar uh, to when I was growing up, it was the swing club. Right, you right. Know, and uh, some really good memories there on uh, Thursday nights particularly. But mm -hmm. um, but now a uh, full-scale restaurant, pub, and, and much uh, more also with the, the catering business, the banquet hall, et cetera. Right. I mean, you know, ironically, it, when I first bought the property in 1998, I wanted to get away from just that bar atmosphere, and I, I, I wanted to be a restaurant. I mean, my goal was to be a restaurant. Uh, and then after being there about five or six years, the restaurant was slowly gaining, slowly gaining, and I thought, to really take that next step and to really valid validate the place as a restaurant, I had to shut the nightclub down in the upstairs. So I shut the nightclub down in the upstairs, turned it into a banquet hall. That banquet hall today is extremely busy and that's kind of a catalyst to bringing a lot of faces into the place. Um, and to where we are today, where basically every Saturday we have a wedding reception, a company function, a shower, something in that upstairs on Saturdays, Sundays, through the week also. And it brings a lot of faces into the place. Today we are by far, we sell a lot more food than alcohol on the, uh, every month. We're by far, the food is the driving force. Mike, you, know, you talked about buying the property in 1998, you know, from other, um, you know, other family had owned it over the mm -hmm. years and uh, the, the generations uh, before you, but you know, you're an example of something that we've seen in more recent times. You kind of were one of the uh, uh, leaders of people that hit the, kind of moved out of the area and then came back. You know, you lived in, in, in other parts of West Virginia, you know, worked uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, for the newspaper down right. the Elkins area, 
and then decided to come back here to Wheeling uh, to where you grew up. You know, you graduated from Central Catholic and had grown up here and came back to the area. And what led you to make that decision, hey, I want to come back home? Well, I, I, I'd worked for the Nuttings. I moved to Elkins in 92, I believe. I was down there advertising director uh, at the newspaper for seven years and decided uh, the opportunity was there. My dad had, had been trying to get me to look at taking over the, the swing club, the old swing club. Wasn't too keen on it. Uh, and then after a couple years of him continually asking me, my wife finally said, uh, you know, you know, grandkids, you know, it'd be nice to go back home. So we decided to make the move back home. And I remember one thing that my father-in-law, who has since passed, John Daniel, told me when he, I believe he passed in 1989, but he told me, if you're ever given the opportunity to take that business, you take it. And then he says to his, my wife, his daughter, and you stay out of his way. Because <laughs> he was, you know, was self-employed at Spick and Span Cleaners for years. So that was always kind of in her mind. It was always kind of in my mind, you know. So I said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll purchase the property. We'll go back. And, uh, but once again, I want to get into more of the restaurant than just the bar. Well, well, and you've done that, and you've really have you know identified yourself, and people now identify you as as a, a place for the entire family to mm -hmm. go for whatever it may be, a special occasion, you know, after a game, you know, a, a big family event. Uh, you see people all over the restaurant, whether it be at lunchtime, dinner time, you know, really a family atmosphere now. And then late at night, you know, you still have the entertainment and stuff, but. Um, you know, and it's fun to see now your kids in there. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I look and I see your kids, you know, sometimes helping to wait the tables or seat somebody, that type mm -hmm. of thing. That's, that's kind of cool too. Right, generations, it just keeps, ideally it just keeps rolling on. Well, you know, I think the generations too, Mike, it, it pertains not only to, I think, your family, but also for the families that, that, that go to it. I mean, right. you know, you have people like me who, you know, went there as, you know, maybe a, uh, a teenager into my college years and now my kids are going there to eat and uh, since a part of their lives and growing up too here in the Wheeling area so I, I think it makes it pretty special for that reason uh, as well but uh, you, you're you're been kind of uh, growing and expanding in some ways too in other places and we'll talk about that a little bit but you mentioned you know the the upstairs and um, you know, the different events. People may not realize, you know, how many people can actually fit into that upstairs. You, you got a pretty good size area up there. Yeah, I have two primary rooms. Uh, one can hold about 110 and the other can hold 250 if you do not use the dance floor. If you're using the dance floor for a wedding, we're probably, we'd be down to around 225 in the main hall. And then the other, ha other half would still be the 110. We have done events, i.e. wedding receptions, where we've had over 300 people, but some of them are in the other room so there's limited visibility but yeah, sometimes you want some of them in the other yeah, room. yeah well yeah exactly <laughs> you know christmas season it's, it you know we have uh, we'll have one company with 150 on this side and another company with 85 to 100 on the other side every friday and saturday for years now i mean it, we've been fortunate we need to take a break we come back we'll continue to talk with mike the plug a little bit about some of the other areas in town where they may be involved and also some of the events that may be coming up stay with us here on the jamie Borda show Fighting for homeowners. Fighting for workers. Fighting for children. Fighting for mineral owners. Fighting for patients. Fighting for policyholders. Bordas and Bordas. Fighting for justice. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration has been restoring homes after disasters for nearly four decades. Through that experience, we present Panhandle Custom Homes, Kitchens, and Baths. We handle your entire project, from concept to completion, working with you every step of the way. From the budget-minded upgrade to a fully custom remodel, you can trust the Panhandle name. Panhandle Custom Homes, Kitchens, and Baths. Welcome home. Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking here today with my guest, Mike the Plug of Generations Restaurant and Pub in Wheeling. And Mike, as, as we were talking, you know, one of the things that's happened is that you, your reach in town has kind of grown, you know, in different places. One is at the Wheeling Nailers games. You know, people now find, you know, generations there at the game and also serving some of the loges and things like that, but also down there uh, below. And how, that, how's that relationship work? 
Uh, we, we've uh, opened up a location down at West Bank Arena uh, through the city. I have a lease agreement with, uh, with Denny down at the, the arena. It's a, it's a, it's a percentage-based uh, arrangement. Uh, it's worked out well. I mean, it, provide, it, we, it, it gets us into another facility, and we provide a valuable, a valuable option for the people that are there, whether they're for a nailer game or monster trucks or what have you. We have a sit-down restaurant scaled down menu that what you have at the restaurant, but you have full beverage opportunities, big screen TVs. You can go to a Naylor game, watch the game, come down to intermission, watch a college basketball game during intermission, go back to the Naylor game. So it just, just provides a, a, another atmosphere within the arena while the event's going on. Well, I think it also, it gives the arena um, the opportunity to have a, a, a bigger city feel to it. Right. You know, you, you go into right. the other arenas around the country and they have things like that. And I think the fact that you're able to come to that arrangement really provides a, a great opportunity for people here to, to be a little bit more like the arenas are in, whether it be in Pittsburgh, New York, LA, right. wherever it may be. Kind of, it's a win-win, each, each party benefits. You know, another new location for you um, more recently is up at West Liberty. You know, uh, the students up there are kind of isolated to some degree in terms of dining options, things of that mm -hmm. nature. There's not a lot up at West Liberty, and now you do have a, a place up there. Yeah, we have a location in the former Roadworthy uh, property. Uh, we call it G-Top, Generations on the Hilltop. Uh, you're exactly right, the, the, it's very limited up there, not just the students, but you know, we, we, have, we have families will call and make a reservation after, like for this weekend, basketball games. The parents come to town, they want to see, they come to see their kids play softball, baseball, basketball, whatever it is, and after the game, there's nowhere to go. They got to drive to Wellsburg. A lot of families drew, would drive the wheeling. They'd come to Generations. So we we're kind of splitting hairs being up there, but we're, but it's worked out well. Um, you know, we're, we open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday while school's in. Um, but it, you know, not just for the students, but it, it gives the families and the people who are actually going to the game something to do, so they don't have to drive. 10, 15 minutes to get to a sit-down restaurant. The menu up at West Liberty, similar to the menu you have down in Fulton? Absolutely, it's about 60% of the menu we have in Fulton is at West Liberty. Still get the pierogies probably. Absolutely, it's a staple. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> people even have, I see the shirts people wear and sometimes got pierogies. Got you pierogies, know. yeah. It's uh, certainly well known for it and some family yeah. heritage maybe yeah. there to do with that. But uh, uh, you know, talking about some of the other things that you do now, you know, event promotion and entertainment is one of the big things that you've done in recent years. And um, a recent expansion, you know, at your Fulton location, um, you know, Panhandle did a, did a great job with that. Uh, Panhandle Custom Homes, Kitchens and Baths actually did my set here and did a fantastic yeah. job with it, but uh, did a great job uh, expanding uh, your place as mm -hmm. well. And now you have a bigger uh, venue there for entertainment as well. Yeah, we, we put a thousand square foot addition onto the existing building uh, that we opened up in June. Uh, it, it is uh, done a very, it's, it's worked out really well, really well. A lot of uh, valuable footage for both the bands on Saturday nights and for the restaurant, football viewing, NFL Sundays, college bowl games, et cetera. You have uh, some events coming up, uh, you know, particularly this weekend. You have the uh, halfway to Jambo party, which maybe almost didn't happen, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah well, we, were, we weren't sure where that was going to be a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we, we, we are hosting it once again for Live Nation. This is like maybe seventh, eighth year in a row. Um, Live Nation is on hand for, this, for the event. They give away four-day passes to Jamborina Hills. They have other drawings, win hats, shirts, giveaways, etc. Uh, and then we bring in a, a, a band. We have a Zane Run will be open, which is a, a very popular local band. And then an up and coming country act by the name of Sam Grow will, will headline the show and he'll, they'll do two 75 minute sets after Zane Run. What's the, what's the cost for $10. $10, oh. you get tickets online or just $10 at the door. Pretty cheap for, very, uh, for that type of entertainment. Very affordable. You, you, and, you, and you regularly have acts, you know, uh, bands like Hit Play, the mm -hmm. Lava Game that are regional bands that are kind of really growing uh, there at the restaurant. They're coming up here in the, in the uh, winter months here, it looks like. Yeah, we, are, we I try to bring in bands that uh, you're not going to get just at any other place in Wheeling or the immediate area. Um, and people, a lot of people will come on Saturday nights. They know they may not necessarily know who the band is going to be that Saturday night, but they know they're going to get a top notch band. Yeah. And uh, People can always come in on Sundays and watch the Oakland Raiders. I know your yeah. favorite team. They had a great, great season. You know, the one injury could have been any other position, but that position. Yeah, losing the quarterback is yeah. always tough. You know, and uh, and Carr was having a, a really good year, mm -hmm. and uh, 
that have to, to start a rookie and, you know, that's yeah. an experience is, is a tough thing, but you've been a longtime Raiders fan. All my life, all my life, go all the way back to the, the old bitter Steeler Raider games, which still some of the greatest games ever played. But on Sundays, you do have a lot of football going on, not just the Raiders, of course. You've got a lot of TVs in there, and people like to, I, I've noticed people really like to come there and watch games. Yeah, we have the NFL Sunday tickets, so we actually have people start calling at 12-15, can I reserve this TV for this game, this TV for this game? We have 12 TVs. Now, we only have, we have 11 70-inch screens, so we may have to put some people in some other rooms with the smaller screens, but, uh, we, you know. But that's something they can do. They can request Absolutely. the game they want. Absolutely, yep. Well, that's, a, that's a nice thing to have. Well, mm -hmm. Mike, uh, good luck with all you're doing. It sounds like the uh, things are going well with the expansion, with the things at West Liberty, the things at the arena, and uh, it's great to continue to have your family operating uh, such a viable business uh, here in the Wheeling area. We're, we're happy to be there and happy that the Wheeling area supports us tremendously. Well, thanks for being here today. Thank you. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll be talking sports, especially with the Steelers. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. At Progressive Bank, our loan process is unique. It's personal. Our local lenders ease your mind and help you get the loan you need and deserve. Progressive Bank, personal bankers with millions to lend to local families and businesses. Come in, Ohio Valley. We're lending. Every day, more than 70,000 puppies and kittens are born in the United States. Just one female can contribute more than 2 million offspring in eight years. At the Tiffany DeLess Spay and Neuter Clinic, we are trying to help. We offer reduced cost services to income qualified families from all over the Ohio Valley. We understand that the cost of owning a pet can be overwhelming, and that stress multiplies when they do. Call the Tiffany DeLess Spay and Neuter Clinic or visit us online to find out if we can help you. Progressive Bank understands borrowing money can be a daunting experience. Our local lenders ease your mind and help you get the loan you need and deserve. Progressive Bank, personal bankers with millions to lend to local families and businesses. Come in, Ohio Valley. We're lending. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports. And I'm going to start off this week with the West Virginia Mountaineer basketball team. My goodness, last weekend beats TCU by 12 at home to set up a big matchup with number one Baylor this week. And the Mountaineers just blew them out by 21 points at the Coliseum. What an impressive win. I mean, the Press Virginia was in full effect. You know, really causing problems for the number one ranked team in the country. Baylor's first rise to number one, and it's gonna be short lived because of that Mountaineers tenacious defense. and some really good transition play also off the turnovers. My big question for the Mountaineers is can they do it on the road? You know, they, they feed off of that energy at the Coliseum. I think it's a really, really tough place for opposing teams to play. Mountaineers are in the top 10 now uh, as they've been for a couple of weeks, but they go on the road this weekend to play at Texas. And in a couple of weeks, they have a game at Kansas, who's the number two team in the country. Um, actually, they get Kansas at home. They, they have Kansas State, the number 25 team in the country on the road, but then Kansas back home. So a tough schedule coming up, but a couple of road games, you know, at Texas, at Kansas State, where they have to travel across the country. Can they win on the road and keep up that high energy defense, that pace, when they're not feeding off the energy from the crowd? That's my big question. So I'm really eager to see what happens in a couple of these games coming up against Texas against Kansas State on the road. If they can show that they can be impressive on the road, then I think this Mountaineer team has real potential to go a long way in the NCAA tournament. If not, and they don't show they can do things at a neutral court or on the road, then I think they'll have a really, really nice year, but I don't know how far they'll go. So let's keep an eye on that, but congratulations to the Mountaineers for knocking off the number one team in the country. Turning to college football now, the NCAA championship game. Clemson beats Alabama. I predicted last week on this show that Clemson would win. They did. I said that the difference may be the not having the play caller there in Lane Kifton and the freshman quarterback in Jalen Hurts. As it turns out, I think the freshman quarterback held his own. I mean, scored what appeared to be you know, the, the go-ahead touchdown, certainly. And a lot of people thought it would be the game-winning touchdown with a nice run and had the big pass to the tight end Howard down the sideline, you know, and in in late in the game. And uh, looked like he was going to do everything needed to be done, but Deshaun Watson, that Clemson offense, just would not go away, kept going, going, and, and scored with one second to go. Now, I will say this. I did not like the play call for the game-winning touchdown by Clemson. I thought anything other than Watson rolling out, they'd be safe and still be able to kick the game-tying field goal if they didn't score on that play. 
even a run play isn't going to take six seconds. You can you know, run it, you don't get in, call timeout. I thought that rolling Watson out and making the throw to Renfro was very risky. I mean, if, if Renfro drops that ball, the clock doesn't stop until the ball hits the ground. That tick could have gone from one to zero, and they don't even have a chance to kick a field goal. So I thought it was a very gutsy call, probably not the call that I would have made. It turns out it worked. Uh, a lot of people complained that it was a pick play. Uh, you know, those rub routes happened. You know, the, the defender that was watching Renfro wasn't, there was no contact made with him. There was with the other defender, but it uh, looked like it was mutual contact. But a very gutsy call, and it turns out it worked. So Dabo Sweeney's a genius, and they win the national championship and knock off Alabama and Nick Saban, the first time that Saban's lost in a national title game, uh, and he's uh, had a spectacular career. But uh, congratulations to the Clemson Tigers for winning that game. And the NFL, the Steelers with an impressive performance. A.B. was awesome early in the game. I mean, uh, you know, two touchdowns to get things going, and the Steelers rolled a 30-12 to 12 win. Of course, the, the, I thought the big thing in the game was the defense really played kind of nasty, and you haven't seen that in, in recent years out of the Steelers' defense. And they can continue that with the explosion on offense and, of course, Le'Veon Bell setting a Steelers playoff record for most rushing yards in a game. With those guys healthy and with the defense playing they are, the way they are, the Steelers really have a chance. But Big Ben, a little bit dinged up late in the game. Should he have still been in? Coach Tomlin getting a lot of criticism for that. He said he made the decision to leave him in. He made the decision that the pass would be, would be called. Apparently a young receiver ran the wrong route. But nonetheless, should he even be in the game when they're up by that many points late in the game? Very questionable decision. decision but NFL coaches tend to leave those quarterbacks in. I would have had Landry Jones in there. I don't like taking a chance when you've got the lead like that. The game wasn't in jeopardy. I thought Landry Jones should have been in the game instead of Big Ben, but looks like Ben will be okay. Now they go to Kansas City to face the Chiefs. Steelers on this huge winning streak here now, eight games. And what happens here? They blew the Chiefs out on a Sunday night in Pittsburgh earlier this year. I was at that game, and the Steelers just rolled from the beginning. But playing at Arrowhead's another story. But the Steelers are playing so well right now that I like the Steelers to win this one. I'm going to take the Steelers to win by four this week. I said I had the Steelers by 10 last week, and they, they, they beat my spot. I'll take the Steelers this week by four. The other game in the AFC, of course, Houston had be, beat uh, the Oakland Raiders last week, now goes to a New England with the New England huge favorites, and I'll take New England in that game, setting up a, a Pittsburgh-New England AFC championship game in Foxborough the following week. And the NFC, when, as I predicted, Seattle beats Detroit, Green Bay beats the Giants. Now Seattle goes to Atlanta. I like Seattle in this game. They're my pick to go to the Super Bowl out of the NFC. I'll stick with them. And that Green Bay-Dallas game, I'm going to go with Dallas in this one, despite how well Aaron Rodgers is playing. I like Dallas being at home, those young rookies. I don't think they can make it all the way, but I think they will win this week. Still setting up my pick, Steelers versus Seahawks for the Super Bowl. We'll continue to keep an eye on it, but uh, my, my guys are still alive that I picked in the preseason on this show, so I'm going to stick with them. Thanks for being with us here again this week. Hope you all enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week on the Jamie Bordas Show.